All right, welcome everyone. Good evening. Uh, so this is a very important thing that we will learn today, tackling tiredness. What it is in a simple way, it is uh, energy management. It is about how we can remain energetic throughout the day. Um, how not to feel tired and how to be efficient. Uh, so, you know, we have so many tasks that we do and to be able to do that in the a, in a best way, uh, we need to learn how to do it. So I'm going to share something and then we will start there. This is the, um, as I know many of you probably our science have been science students. So we'll start there. Um, the first law of the thermodynamics. If you don't remember, I will be very uh, talking in very simple terms so we can understand uh, what is this about. And so uh, thermo, first of all, thermodynamics is a branch of the physics. Uh, that that teaches us about the energy and the work done by the energy. Um, so energy and work. So the relation between the two. We, the people, we have some amount of energy before we do any work and then we do the work and then we have a different amount of the energy. So example, in the morning we have uh, say, uh, a certain amount of the energy. And in the evening, we have used this energy to do different tasks and we have a different energy in the end. And then we, if we have wasted a lot of energy uh, through the day, then we say we feel tired. And so we want to learn how to remain energetic and at the same time be able to perform uh, the duties that we do. And so it is uh, beneficial to look at this first law of the thermodynamics. Uh, in the simple terms, what it is, is the law that states that the energy is not depleted, neither created. So that's a very simple understanding. Energy can not, neither be depleted or created, it gets transferred into something else. So for example, if I have a certain amount of the energy and then I use it to do some work, it is now transferred into the work. And so work plus energy, that remain constant. In physics terms, they use diff different uh, words, but in a spiritual terms, this is the easy way to understand. And so what it is, is the, let's say beginning, in the beginning we have, uh, this is the formula E2 minus E1. E2 is the energy in the beginning, E1 energy in the end, Q is the amount of the effort or the heat, the heat transfer in the, in the terms of the physics. But for, for this purpose of this talk, that, uh, that heat transfer is the effort that we put in and W is the work that is done. Okay, so that's the formula. Uh, the difference between the energy level in the morning and the different and the energy level in the evening, if that is the same or close to same, then we cannot feel that we cannot have that tiredness. We feel energetic. Normally, what we see is we have morning full of energy and the evening, you know, lack of energy, and we feel tired. I'm saying morning and evening, but it could be before and after a certain work. Uh, the goal is to keep the two close together. Because we begin to work, we begin to do something with 
potentially full amount of 100% energy. And then we put it into the work. And uh, there is a, if we understand this formula well, then we can do really good on conserving energy and, and using it. So the goal is to keep E2 even similar or close, close together. And at the same time, to be able to do the work W and the heat in, the, in terms of physics, it's a heat, but in terms of this talk, it's the effort, how much effort I'm putting in. So let's look at these. I'm going to unshare and uh, let's look at these uh, formula and then go through uh, this process. Uh, this understanding. Mm -hmm. So I have this written right here, E2 minus E1, that one, the first one in terms of physics, and that, that one in terms of our talk. So I wrote here E uh, in the beginning, energy in the beginning, energy in the end, effort that I put in, and the work that I do. So of these, this one is constant or a fixed W. W is a work done. So uh, what I have to do, that's the W. I have to do some work in the house. I have to do the job. I have to do some thinking. I have to deal with some problems. I have to do my routine daily work. All this falls into that W. I have to interact with others. That also is that W. And that is fixed. That means that I have to do that. I can't modify that. It is something that, that uh, a task that is ahead. Okay. Um, of course, one can say, okay, so I, if, uh, I can conserve a lot of energy if I don't do any work. You know, if, if I zero my W, I'm fine, I have total, I'm full of energy. But then that is like a, a inner dead energy. There's no flow. Uh, and uh, the, for the beauty of the life, we need a flow. That means, I cannot just say, I'm going to sit around and conserve the energy. I want to bring the beauty in my work. I want to bring uh, a good feeling in the relations. So that's the W. So don't uh, cut down on the work because you want to conserve energy, but do the work wisely in a, uh, with bringing in beauty. So that W is fixed, can't change that one. You can probably change that by modifying this one, effort, because the work could be anything. But if I, if I pay, pay attention to what effort I'm putting in, to do that work, what effort I'm putting in, then my, my work I can modify, even if it is something not good. If I'm, if I'm uh, doing something difficult, I can modify my effort that I put in. So let us look at some uh, understanding of what is that effort that we put in. Uh, so, Effort is something that is, could be positive or could be negative. Uh, if we put in something positive, if I put in positive effort in my work, let's say I have a work to do and I put in um, energy of enthusiasm in it. Okay, that's my effort that I put in. Then I bring positivity and I don't, I conserve a lot of energy by doing that. On the other hand, if I put in the, the effort of sulking 
or feeling um, negative about the task that is ahead or, or having any negative emotions while doing it or even feeling that I can't do this, um, then I bring, I, uh, I use a lot of energy. So our uh, example is uh, if I, uh, let's say I have a, uh, I, I tell myself that I will remain silent. I will remain peaceful through this day. That is my, uh, that is my effort that I want to make whatever I do. Then what happens is I bring this uh, peaceful energy into everything that I do. It could be difficult task, but I remind myself I will remain peaceful. And then I perform my task. I'm interacting with somebody. I'm putting in an effort that I will remain silent. I will remain peaceful as I interact. Uh, and so it conserve, I conserve a lot of energy just by putting this effort, positive effort in it, by not adding anything negative. Generally, when we are not aware, we put in a lot of negative energy. Uh, we create a rush uh, because we feel that there is a lack of time. As we, let's say I'm going to work and I'm, uh, I have only 15 minutes, then I create a lot of hurry and then worry. And then, uh, you know, I deal with the traffic. I create a lot of negative or waste thoughts in the traffic. If I get stuck somewhere or if I see somebody else not driving carefully, something like this. And then at the work, if I uh, come across uh, what I think is not right, then it also creates a lot of waste or negative uh, thoughts in the mind. So this is how we work and we perform our duties. Somehow we manage to do what we are supposed to do uh, in the house, while relaxing, while at work, everywhere. We, this is our method of working. That's our modus operandi. Yeah, because everybody, we everybody has their set pattern of what kind of uh, uh, waste we create. We have a set pattern. So if you can observe yourself, how you're how you're thinking, how you're behaving, uh, then you will see that you have a pattern. And uh, that's the art. If we can learn to observe ourselves, then we can modify that. And uh, <clears throat> so I will come to that in a more detailed um, manner to, to learn that uh, too. Yeah, but let's look at the other things. So this was our formula and the effort and this one. This is the end point of the energy. And this is the beginning point. E in the beginning, energy in the beginning. Uh, the question is how much energy we have in the beginning do all of us have the same amount of energy? 
And uh, a logical answer to me is no, we don't. We have different, uh, different levels of energy. Uh, also, while performing different tasks, we have different kinds, different levels of energy. So what decides this beginning energy? How much energy I have to begin with? What decides that? Um, is it something that I am born with or something related to the task or the work that I'm doing? Uh, logically thinking, if it is related to the task that I'm doing, then it should be the same for everyone, right? I go to office, I see my patients, and other doctors also see the, see the patients. But we have different levels of energy. Some are cheerful, some are not. So it's not the task related. It's something inside us. So what it is? Is it... Something can I, is it something that I can modify? Is it something that I can work with to enhance my level of beginning energy so that I don't feel tired through the day? So just give a thought what you can do to increase this energy before you perform any task. Just think that you are just woke up in the morning and you are fresh, your body is very relaxed and you feel ready to do something ready to do whatever task is ahead. Just to bring that kind of a scene in your, in your mind. And, and feel, feel that uh, enthusiasm Feel that energy that you have. And what is the source of that energy? Where, where did you get it from? Where do you get it from every morning? Or most morning? You feel so much tired at the end of the day. And you fall to sleep and in the morning, most of the time you feel refreshed. Where does that come from? It is the energy that is you, the energy that you carry. It is your internal battery that gets recharged when you rest, when you sleep. So it is your inbuilt mechanism, inbuilt power. And this inbuilt power
it gets recharged when you disconnect. Disconnect from the source of the leakage waste of the energy. And you get connected with the source of the energy. You disconnect from the equipment that uses the energy. You, the soul, disconnect from the body. You, the soul, connect with the source of the energy. And you feel refresh, powerful, energetic, ready, So this is, this is your reality. The more you are in connection with this true self of you and with the source of the energy, the more empowered, more easy you are, more you are able to do any task effortlessly. So just take one minute in this one minute, think of yourself as a, a source of the energy of this body, a point, a point of energy. in the center of your forehead, radiating out the powerful vibrations into your body, into your environment. And you're connected with the source of the energy, the supreme light, from whom you're continuously getting recharged. There's no depletion as long as this connection is on. So just keep this visual in your intellect. Keep looking at yourself as a point connected with the vibrations of energy coming from above, radiating out powerful vibrations. peaceful vibrations.
loving energy. Energy of bliss, happiness, creating an environment of harmony, enthusiasm, pulling everyone who comes into this aura. into this positive vibrations. Transforming your own nature. Transforming your environment. Now become aware of your present situation. Become aware of your surrounding. Become aware of the things, the tasks that are ahead and the tasks that you have performed through this day. Simultaneously remaining aware of that consciousness of who you really are and how you're bringing the power into your work. Let me bring your attention back to this equation. This effort, we can work here. We can work here. These are the two effort and the beginning energy. We just, in this meditation, we just, uh, so an example how we can enhance our beginning energy. And it's not just the one time enhancement. We can do this throughout the day. Throughout the day, I can remain in this consciousness and perform any task with ease. I'll just give you my example. Um, I, I see 50 patients every day, sometimes more. But 50 number is always there, 50 plus. It's a lot. Before I came to California, my friend who was calling me here, uh, he kept calling me for seven, eight years that he wants me to work here with him. And uh, I was in North Carolina and I was seeing maybe 12 patients a day, something like this in the university setting. So I, I, didn't, I had no idea. So, and I did not want to come, not because uh, he had a lot many patients. I didn't even know what he does here. So anyways, I, for one reason or the other, I, I kept saying no, and one day, uh, I said, yeah, let me try. But then I said, you know, I can see, I went into the details of how much he wants me to do. I said, you know, I can see 12, maybe maybe 15 patients a day. I said, he said, yeah, yeah, it's fine. 15 patients, come on here. 
And uh, procedure wise, you know, I used to do like seven, eight procedures over there. Uh, and here, it's a lot. So he, he said, I, I said, I will do seven, eight procedures. Fine, that's fine. Come on in, come on in. So one Christmas morning, I was here. It was Christmas time, something. Anyways, I came here till one day. And then I joined uh, later on. I still had no idea what he, what kind of work he has. But I found myself doing, uh, day number one, I saw 40 patients. I said, wow, that's unusual, 40 people. And then day number next week, it was, you know, 50. So it's like gradually kept increasing. But at that time I was learning how to meditate. Uh, and then uh, I found uh, myself to be, to be able to accommodate. I found myself to be able to, it's a long, long process, but I, I found that I can do it. The more I, the more work that was put on me and instead of questioning or sulking or having any negative thoughts about this, you know, why I have to do this and he said only 12 and here I have 50, I did. Uh, and I saw that I could see it. I could, I could do everything. I could do 25 procedures a day and fine. And the more I did, the more uh, accurate I become, the more uh, focused I could remain, the more loving care I could give to the patients. Uh, not that I rushed through them and then uh, did uh, those, uh, uh, reach the goal of seeing that many patients, but I was able to do it. What I was doing, now I can tell you, is I was mm -hmm. not creating anything negative. That's that. That's the first thing. They, uh, the first thing they, this part, this effort. I was not putting anything negative there. Had I put anything negative here? That, you know, how come this many and, you know, or whatever, I could have 100 negative thoughts about this. Then I would have, I have that much energy in the beginning and I'm putting all my energy into that. And then what happens to my work? You know, I can't take care of my patients in a good way. So that was I was doing. Also, in the meditation, you know, I remained close to this, close to the source. So that's my example. I go to work in the evening. When I come back, I feel the same amount of energy I have in the morning. I feel not depleted at all. I don't just. I don't have sofa here, but you know, some people like to come home and just like on the sofa, just turn on something on a TV or anything. I don't have TV. So that's, these are another thing, other things. You don't have to be harsh on you like that and don't have TV, don't have sofa, but I'm just giving my example. Why I don't have it is because I don't need it. And I don't need it. I don't need sofa, I don't need TV because, uh, and that helps me too, because if I, if I don't have TV, there's no, there's, there's nothing uh, in my, in my uh, surrounding that will deplete me more. I can turn on any channel and you know, some negative news can come and I can get drawn into it. My thoughts will go into that and then I'll get more tired. So that's just an example I just wanted to tell. But I want to bring your attention back to 
uh, uh, details of what negative, how we create negative or waste. It's adding two things. One is adding a response uh, of adding a, a, a faulty perception. What is happening outside, what others are doing, I can perceive it in my own, uh, in my, with my own filter and, and create something waste or negative. You know, why me? What, what is going to happen? How I can do this? These kind of questions, it depletes me. I can remain in a very understanding mode and say, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, there's a problem, so I can deal with it. And yeah, that's a, that's a difficult task, but yeah, I can do it. Let me see if I can uh, do some, something else. So that, it brings me finesse into my work. You know, I can, uh, if I see that, oh, this is a task, it's very difficult, and it's like this, it, so I can create, Either I can create that kind of uh, wasteful thoughts, or I can say, let me see if I can do it differently. Let me see if I can. So when I do it different, when I, when I be more creative, when I use my creative side, I not only bring positivity, I don't get depleted. I also become expert how to do this you know, expert, whatever work you are doing, you become really good. And uh, it's not just the talk, they come and tell you. You're the, the people that you interact with, they will tell you, or they will appreciate what you're doing. And I feel that every day, I hear that every day. I know that I'm doing it right. And the more I, more I, uh, I hear from them, the more I become uh, encouraged to exercise myself, to, to, to put in the positive effort. And then another aspect I want to uh, talk about this E in the beginning, energy in the beginning. One is rejuvenating yourself with connecting to who I am, my real self, and connecting to the source. Second is uh, rejuvenating from the body standpoint, because this body is not a machine. You know, I'm a I'm a soul, fine, but then this body is a is my uh, the perfect best friend. I cannot. Um, a, a flog that tired horse you know at the end of the day the body gets tired so you can't just uh, keep the body running just because you have this soul consciousness just because you become aware that you are a soul and keep doing no get, you, you need to give rest to your body so the four pillars of the health. Three we know. One is uh, diet, good diet, uh, you know, rest, exercise. And the fourth is good thoughts. But the rest part, I need to rest. I need to sleep well. And that is a big thing, sleeping well. We have talked about this before, but I will briefly uh, mention it here because it's uh, to conserve the energy. We need to we need to know how to sleep well. We need to know what is called as a sleep hygiene. To sleep well, I need to remain. Uh, I need to be. Uh, I need to have my day to have a good night. I need to have a good day. My day need to be good for my night, uh, for if I want my night good. What does it mean is, if I remain attentive throughout the day, 
of not creating anything negative, then my mind is already in this easy mode. And then in the night, we just I, I just fall asleep easily. If in the day, um, if I have created negative thoughts or wasteful thoughts, then I would take time. I would not be able to sleep right away. I would take more than usual to fall asleep. So if I fall asleep at, uh, if I went to bed at 10 o'clock, I would still not be asleep at 11 because the mind is running. It takes time to, for it to slow down. And so you need to, you need to give, you need to understand this uh, and keep attention through the day. And in the night, when you sleep, you just give a little time to the body, you know, give at least 15 minutes, 15 minutes of, uh, you know, no, nothing uh, that will stimulate your brain too much. Uh, you know, some good thoughts, good uh, reading, uh, electronics should be closed away, should not be there because electronics, you know, the first thing, uh, the last thing that uh, we go to bed with is, uh, is the phone or the email or the message. And uh, uh, that um, activates your mind. Uh, and then you take a longer time to go to sleep. It could be simple thing, you know, it could be somebody has sent uh, a text message, which is 90% uh, time, 90, I would say 95% time, it's not necessary. And uh, what are you going to do anyways? If somebody had sent a text at the last minute of your uh, awake, remaining awake, if you saw that, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. You're going to respond them in the morning anyways. So don't touch it. Don't do it. Fine. 9.30, stop. Put, put it away. You see it in the morning. Uh, in the morning, you do the same. Don't uh, look at your email or text message or anything like that uh, in the morning hours. And this is important in the morning hours because in the morning, uh, <clears throat> uh, our body... Uh, Throughout the day, our body follows a, what is called as a circadian rhythm, circadian rhythm. It's a, uh, our body has many processes that goes on inside. Uh, one of the big ones is the hormone secretions, hormones. And uh, the hormones, uh, they, they're not like a constant secretion throughout the day. There are variations, ups and downs. And these, these variations uh, are according to the ambience, according to the day, according to the light. Uh, so when the sun is rising, you have a, a wave of the good hormones, a surge of the good hormone secretions as the sun is rising. And then as the day goes, then you have this good hormone just decrease and then uh, the stress kind of hormones become more active. So in the early part of the morning, you have this surge of the good hormones. You want to take advantage of that. Your body naturally does it. Your body secretes a beautiful good hormones 
uh, in the morning. And these hormones have effect on all your body organs. And these effects are not like, uh, you know, injection given and you have an effect now and five minutes later, it's not there. These hormonal uh, effect lasts for a long time. Uh, just to give you an example, um, if I irritated you, made you, if I angered you now, you would have the effect of that anger for several minutes or hours. Your mind will be running. Different kinds of thoughts and emotions will, will not let you have peaceful thoughts. Now, this is a negative, the force of the negative energy. The force of the positive energy, the force of the bliss is much higher, strong, very strong. You can create a thought of the happiness in the morning. This thought of the happiness is one thought of the happiness is enough to keep your day very peaceful. It has a long effect. You don't realize, but you, you have it inside. You still get affected by what's happening outside, but it, it mellows it down. My internal flow of the happiness, it, it mellows down how I overreact. I still overreact because I'm part of this world. You know, this world is full of so many things. I get drawn into it. But I have the, a better chance of having that peace, a better chance of conserving my energy into good things. So advantage, taking advantage early morning hour is the key to fill yourself with this beginning energy. Besides, you know, knowing I'm a soul connected with the power, this one. Um, so, uh, which, which, what is morning? Yeah, what's the morning hour? Um, and uh, if I have to strictly say something, I would say two o'clock in the morning, starting from two o'clock in the morning until five. These are the, that's the best time where um, you can really just give a boost to yourself. Two to five. And the lowest point, you would, I would say between nine and 12. 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. All the way up to two, I would say, because one and two, most of us are asleep, but you know, some people still keep working. Um, so keep a goal of remaining um, energetic throughout the day. Keep a goal of um, bringing this positivity in that early morning hour. And the, the medical reason is this, your body works with the ambience, works with the light, the luminance outside. Sun is still not up, but the sun before it rises, the rays, the, the waves are there. Every plant, every animal, every insect, everything is affected. So why not you? So it is not a just a, you know, a story. 
but it's a real fact why the sun why the the sunflowers begin beginning to turn towards the sun rays why the plants open up you know the flowers bloom you know with your leaves the leaves of the plants you may have seen they're down in the night in the morning they're up why is it like that and so if the plants can follow if the animals can wake up if the insects can go to sleep you know they have a different circadian rhythm insects you know the insect they they are wake up in the night and they are because they are nocturnal but we have our own circadian rhythm so we are also part of that world so uh but we are intelligent beings so we want to uh take advantage of that so that's the sleep part i want to uh, add um so very simple thing conserve the energy and enhance the level of energy and you will not feel tired how do you enhance remaining aware that you are a soul remaining connected with the source of the energy the supreme light and how to conserve the energy is don't be wasteful don't waste your energy be simple when you when you have when you have simplicity in your life when you are simple in your life then your problems are simple you know if you have complex thinking your problems are complex the problems are huge don't increase your problem by adding more efforts in it make it effortless be easy it's okay um one big thing about how not to create waste how not to have negative thoughts when uh when when i come across a a, a task a difficult situation then naturally it will uh take me into more wasteful thinking right that how am i going to do this or why is it like this or i don't like it right or i could even have anger or even feeling of sorrow you know something something in this is not right in when i interact with the others i can take sorrow so how i can not take sorrow from others how i can not give sorrow to others how i can remain happy how i can give happiness to others how i can make my life simple and easy is the thing that we want to learn and uh, uh the first step i would say is knowing who you are so we say that um um the and the the tiredness you know so when we when we think about tiredness we say that uh, our body feels tired when we do some kind of work right if i if i do some physical exertion exercise or whatever i feel tired but is there any other way i can get tired let's say um a judge you know judge or lawyer all day long he is just the judge is just sitting 
Uh, he's not even, uh, he doesn't have to study or anything. I don't know, he may be, but he's just sitting. He's not doing any, anything physical. But at the end of the day, he feels even more tired than what a working class person may be feeling. That proves that it is the mind also, the thoughts that he's creating. Because he's, he's thinking. The judge has a judge. He's thinking, making decisions, what is right, and things like So he's all day long, he does that. And at the end of the day, he feels the same tiredness as uh, you know a manual worker would do. So it is not just the physical. It's the, the thought also plays a big role. In fact, the thoughts plays a major role in making you tired. The thoughts plays a bigger role in making you tired. I can perform any physical exertion feeling happy. I can exercise and feel happy. I'm exercising, I'm losing weight, I'm maintaining the good health of my body. And I can be really happy and not feel tired, even though I may have done the marathon, right? Or I can sulk and do the little vacuum in that little corner. I'll feel tired. So that proves that it's the mind that plays a big role in making you tired. So the key not to feel tired is to working on your mind, to get a good handle on your mind. And what is mind? It's not the brain, not the same thing as the brain. Because we order, we order as doctors, we order the brain MRI or brain CT scan. We don't order the, the mind MRI. There's nothing like a mind MRI, right? And also, uh, we all know about the term called as mindfulness. Mindfulness. We are mindful about something, right? We don't say brainfulness. So two different things, mind, brain. The difference is, one is physical and one is non-physical. Something that you can't, not tangible. The mind is not tangible. It is not non-physical entity. Uh, and so that's important to know because that's where the thoughts are. The thoughts are created in the mind, we know that. The thoughts are created in the mind. These same thoughts then get transferred to the brain and the brain works accordingly. The brain will have its own way of thinking also. There will be some kind of a lower level of the thoughts generated there also. And then it will have impulses transmitted to the different veins and different nerves and different organs. And then it will also, there is something called as a neuroendocrine mechanism. It will stimulate some endocrine system and it will create something. But that's a lower level of functioning. But the complex level of functioning that we, the humans do, it doesn't come from that level. I cannot, I cannot become I cannot function as a president of the country just by working at the brain level. I'm working at the mind level. So the mind, which is not a physical being, which is something not physical. That's where the thoughts are. So, to not feel tired, I need to be able to have a good handle on the mind. And the mind is a beautiful thing that we have. 
uh, it is uh, it's like a child who runs around, who has different ideas and enthusiasm, and it can just run around anywhere. And it is through that one we are able to accomplish everything. It's like I'm, I'm a senior now. I can't move much, but I tell my children to do things and they will do all running around and everything. I just direct them in a nice way. That's exactly how we can have a good handle on, the, on, the, on our mind. Um, creating, create, creating a good thoughts consciously is what we want to learn. Good thoughts, creating good thoughts. I can't tell my mind that create only good because mind will create bad when I say create good. Immediately it will create bad. Um, whatever I say, it can, it can immediately have an opposite thought, you know? So I can't force it, but I can make it a, I can and I can um, get him interested into doing something nice. I can't entice him into doing something good also, which is a mistake we do. When we think that we are meditating, we put on some nice music and meditate, and we think that we have meditated, we have taken our mind into a zone where it feels happy when the music is on, but it still has the inside negative thoughts. It still has that same, same tendency of running here and there, but it's not running as long as the mu music is on. It's not running when, as long as the temperature and everything outside is nice and cool. So the real test comes when you are in the midst of a situation, when you're dealing with something intense, then if your mind is doing something right, creating, creating right thoughts, then that's the kind of control that we need. And how I can bring that control is by becoming aware who really I am. I'm a soul. I'm an energy separate from these five elements from this body. You know, my journey is different, much longer than this, this body. I come from a different place from where this body came from, where this body belongs. My goal is different than this body's. My support system is different in the soul. This firm understanding, deep understanding of this will guide me to that truth. And when I see something that's real, something that is true, something that is pure, then that purity has that power to pull. That truth has that power to pull. My mind will automatically drop everything else that it is holding when it sees the truth. When I, when I see the truth, when I become 
aligned to that truth, then that mind will become still, silent, happy. Because mind is running around right now looking for happiness and peace, looking for joy, looking for fun. Everything is in that truth. It has to experience that. And once it experiences, you don't have to tell it. You don't have to force it. Now, one other aspect. What if this is all just a psychological talk? What if the hundred percent truth that it is all about the body and the brain and all this is just the psychology? Right? That question can come in our scientific mind because what's the proof? What's the proof that there is something called a soul? Who has seen it? Nobody. So if I have a thinking, if I have a thought that it's the brain that is everything, and you know, after death, it's just the death, done deal, end of the story. If I have this thinking, then I would agree also to the fact that, that uh, I am, when I am a, I also would agree to the fact that uh, uh, when I'm young, when I'm a child, then I have, I have less maturity than when I become adult, correct? If I, if I know that, okay, this is all about the brain, then, um, then, the brain of a child is less mature than the brain of the, the body, uh, the, than the mind. Uh, um, so the brain of the adult, right? So the child has, uh, with, with that kind of scientific, think, scientific thinking, uh, as a child, I should be less developed than the adult, but look at this one, what the child can do. <clears throat> the child has the following talents, innocence, you know, child can be innocent. Child can have joy and contentment in little things. Child can be happy with little, I can give a little toy to them, they'll be happy. Child can have a total trust, total trust in their parents or caregivers or teachers or friends. They're very simple, very simple in their life. No complexity. They're able to rest in a stressful environment. It could be anything that's happening outside. They can, they can go to sleep. Adults will not sleep, but they can, child can sleep. They have ability to smile even to the strangers. How many times an adult can do that? And then they have the power to communicate without the language. I mean, they have their own language, but not the language that we adults learn, they don't have that finesse, but they can communicate much better than we do. They can forget and forgive. They can stop worrying. They can change the direction of that thought faster than we can do it. 
they can understand who they are dealing with much better than we do. So look at the how much um, advanced a child is, how much power the child has. And if you look at closely, these are all the qualities of the, the soul. These purity, happiness, these are all the innate qualities of the soul. So you can say that the child is a spiritual being. And that's the spiritual being who radiates the purity, peace, power, prosperity, love, knowledge, bliss. The radiance Their radiance is more powerful in children than us. We uh, living in this life as a body, we become more like body. We also have this power. We also have this radiance. We also have that ability. We were also once children, but now we have become dim because we have, we have aligned ourselves close to the body. So what we have to do is we realize our true self, then we move from being the body, we move towards the soul, then we can express our beauty from within. Then we can feel more contented. We can bring uh, peace into our work. We feel tireless being because these are our natural energies that we radiate out. And through this energy, we work in a natural way. We won't feel tired. And then, you know, I'm a so invisible being in this body. I belong to the world that is uh, beyond this physical world. And I have the, my innate qualities are different than the qualities of the body. The qualities of the body, uh, it's natural for the body to become depleted. It's uh, also, the soul power also gets depleted, but less faster than the body does. And, uh, you know, I'm in charge. So that, kind of uh, true understanding will keep you energetic. And then another aspect is how we can uh, how we can uh, create something positive, how we can create positive thoughts because uh, it is natural for us to uh, get drawn into something in this world and create wasteful thoughts. So if you look at this one, <clears throat> how, we, how we create something is working from here down. This is how we work always. As a bodily being, we have an attitude uh, and based on the attitude, we have our vision, how we see the thing, what I need to do. And then we have action, thoughts, words, and actions. These thoughts are the superficial level thoughts. But this attitude, if it is based on my responses 
of what I perceive from the world here, then that would be that would create a negative or a wasteful uh, thoughts, feelings, and actions. And that will drain me. So what I need to do is I need to start from here. I need to start from my awareness who I am and what kind of feeling that comes with that awareness that I am a powerful, peaceful, loving soul and bring that loving energy into my attitude and clean up my attitude and bring it into the atmosphere and let the atmosphere be full of that loving energy and also bring that love into my vision, what I want to do and my actions, thoughts, words and actions. So this is the uh, a spiritual way of how we can create good, how we can stop the waste. Uh, let me share the one a slide that summarizes some of the things uh, that we we can remember. Be simple. You know, there are two uh, levels. The one is the energy, the efforts, and the second is the, the beginning energy. So effort, what effort I have to do? I have to be simple. I have to be rich. I have to learn to observe and create the thoughts consciously. And just a minute ago, we saw how we can create thoughts consciously. And being rich means what? Being simple means what? Being rich and simple means being a soul. Being this, I am rich with all these values and virtues. I am content. I have everything that I need. I don't need external um, I don't need something from outside to make me feel happy because I'm already full of that happiness. I can give this happiness to others. I can make the others uh, peaceful. So that richness and simplicity means being pure. I'm a pure soul. I am separate from this body. And then the second... Uh, aspect is the, the, how I can enhance my energy is, I remember who I am, I remember the source of the energy, and I take care, I take good care of myself. So I hope that this was uh, beneficial for you all. And this is just a simple understanding that, uh, I thought will be helpful. There are many other things that we can, uh, we can go into the depth of this to know, but I think this is uh, the essence. And if anyone has any questions, um, this would be a good time. Do you have time, Vinod, for any questions? Yes, yes, I'm absolutely ready for yeah. you. Yes. Oh, and thank you everyone for coming. Um, but we could take a moment. This was so informative, so helpful. Um, and if anyone wants a recording of those of you who may not have come at 630. Yeah, so Kalpana, yeah. Uh, just if you could put your email in the chat, it only comes to um, me. <laughs> then I'll, it'll be easier for me to do that. Um, but yes, anyone have any questions for Vinod on today's tackling tiredness? Or even comments or shop sharings or insights? This would be a good time. You just you can just unmute. 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I pressed the wrong one. Go ahead. You can unmute now. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, Anthony. Great. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the talk tonight. Really appreciate it. Um, and um, just so many really good points that I'm just going to let it resonate with me. And I hope I took some notes and I hope that some of it stays with me tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Um, I have a question about, um, you know, I know I can bless people. I know I can send positive uh, energy. And I know that I can keep, try to keep my energy high, keep a high energy vibration. And, uh, and I'm really grateful that I learned that here. Uh, and my question is, sometimes that's challenging when people are, it could be one person, it can be multiple people that are in a negative frame. And uh, I, I guess I'd like to hear, like, what, what what do you suggest or what have you used that's helped you with maybe some negative energy that comes, you know, into your space, be it work or not work? So, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll just pause there. The, <clears throat> the practice of being aware is the key. Awareness. Uh, awareness, it's a spectrum, how we work. We all have this ability. We all are souls in the bodies, but we have a different level from where we work. So if I am dealing with somebody, something intense or somebody um, disturbing, then I that energy sometimes will pull me to uh, closer to the body spectrum, um, more than I will more have responses like a body. And which is, which is right according to the body, but to be more soul conscious is my goal. So I remain aware that I'm a soul. So I remain on this side of the spectrum. And then if I see, then I can look at the situation in a better way and I can respond it in a more peaceful manner. So it's a practice of being so conscious. It's a lifelong practice that we learn in uh, Raj Yoga meditation. Uh, you know, just it's, I'm a soul. It's just the first chapter, but it is the lifelong. And uh, the more we study this, the more we become expert. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Kopana, did you have a question or a comment? No, I had a comment. Uh, this was so revealing to me. Uh, even though I've done the Raj Yoga course, I never realized that thoughts can make you tired. And thoughts that you have throughout the day are what affect your sleep at night. <clears throat> That was such a revelation. And I've always noticed that when I've had, um, you know, emotional ups and downs during the day, my sleep is not as good as if I had had a calm and stable day. So thank you so much. This was very revealing. And um, it's not easy to just switch off the mind. So like you said, it is a practice and an awareness. So thank you again. Om Shanti. Thank you, sister. You are really encouraging. It's very, really, your, your presence is always encouraging. So I have noticed that many meetings and um, I appreciate. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate oh. the energy. Mm -hmm. And sister uh, Elizabeth, you got my email address, right? Yeah. No, I didn't. Just sent it. It says my name next to it. Oh. Because I definitely want a copy of this. Vinod, did it go to you because you're the host? Uh, yeah, it is there. 
it's okay. okay. So Vinod will stay on and we'll share notes after this is okay. And Thank you. And, and I sent mine as well and I wanted to thank I, you. I'm yeah, I did get yours, Mary. Okay, brilliant. And <laughs> I just wanted to so this is so uh, you know timely for me because I do feel that my my, I, yeah, I'm constantly playing a reel of thoughts. And I thought to myself, you know, in, in American society, a lot of what we do is, oh, we need some more coffee. We got to get this going, you know, or how do we get? And so I'm interested a little bit more if you can just briefly talk about your practice or what you do to um, your meditation. I would be interested in hearing about that. Um. Yeah, uh, so what I do is uh, uh, the practice is uh, paying attention to my uh, thoughts. That's the major thing uh, throughout the day. Wake up time, sleep time, mainly sleep time. You know, I, 10 o'clock means end of the story of this day. It, uh, sometimes I can go on maybe half an hour more, but no more because then I want to catch up that morning hour because that's my key, like a, like a shrewd businessman. I, I, we, all the students who learn this, they pay attention to that morning hour because we, we know, we somehow know that that's where the, the goal is to catch up the morning hour. Um, and then we have a daily study also, you know, so just to give you a brief, uh, we are meditators. We learn meditation, how to meditate, uh, how to think, how to behave, because all that comes from the, the diagram that I was showing, you know, how we think, the attitude and the awareness and the stage. That makes, you know, I can speak nicely to somebody, but uh, what about my body language? What is what about my thoughts? What about my behavior? How I think about you? Who is watching that? We keep watch on those these things. We keep a watch on how we think, how we behave, what kind of we always try to bring purity in our interaction with with situations and with people. And so that practice that we do every day, and then we have a study. And this study is the source of a lot of our learning that we uh, that we practice. Okay, and, maybe I'll learn more about the study and that you're the class that you do then. So I'll, yeah. I'll leave, you have my, or they you have my email. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Well. Good to see you all. And thank you again for sharing with us. It was a real pleasure. Thank you so much, Vinod. Can I say one little thing? Of course. Yes, this yes is Valerie. Absolutely brilliant. I, this should go with the seven days course. And uh, there was just so much that was exciting listening to you, brother. It was just very... Um, Everything was dynamic. It was just absolutely incredible. Uh, I'd love to have that recording. Uh, this uh, example of the children, a child, and how he responds to things, and how we as adults have no clue when we <laughs> when we grow up. <laughs> it's amazing. It was it was brilliant. I could not get over what you just what I just heard. It was just <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> between the mind and the brain and who's in charge just exciting thank you valerie all right angels <laughs> alert and awake and energized but going to bed at 10 o'clock yes without caffeine right no power boosts. <laughs> Just the internal power boost. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good night.